G'day everyone and welcome to the Trekzone Spotlight. It's a real honour to welcome today's guest back to Trekzone.org. Mr Rod Roddenberry, thank you so much for your time. Now we last spoke in 2013 uh, when we were both starting out on this podcasting adventure. You were launching the Mission Log podcast. Uh, how's that going? That's going fantastically. I even brought a t-shirt to represent. Um, the idea behind the Mission Log podcast was, uh, well, the early genesis, and I'll be as quick as I can about this, is I've spent you know, most of my life since my father passed away really trying to understand more about the whole uh, Star Trek philosophy and what's made it so special. And, and I don't know if anyone ever fully can say they understand it entirely, but it's always a, a growing and learning process. And one thing I wanted to do, so many people would say to me that, that Star Trek changed your life. The episodes had messages and meanings. So I, I found two amazing hosts um, who, were, who were able to look at things critically but objectively and put them together. And I said, we're going to look at every single episode of Star Trek chronologically from the cage, the original series, through the animated, through the movies, uh, through Next Gen Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, and beyond. And, and uh, that's going to be a 14-year journey. We're going to do it once a week and, uh, you know, have at it. And uh, they, John, John Champion and Ken Ray have been phenomenal. They, they do a, a little summary of the episode. They kind of poke some fun with some wit and humor. Then they kind of get into it and they say, you know, what are the morals, messages, and meanings in here? What worked? What didn't work? Did the same thing apply then in the 60s? Does it apply today as well? Um, so that is something that uh, I think fans really enjoy. Um, and we've made it through all of the original series, all the animated, the first five movies, and we're in season four of The Next Generation. But you can tune in at any time. And I believe that's uh, episode 178, which is The Loss, where Deanna Troy loses her empathic abilities. You got it. You got it. It does help that I've got a computer screen in front of me. I was me. just going to say, yeah, you... You know a lot more than I do. You're cheating. Uh, it's a weekly podcast, isn't it? So that's 178 weeks since the Mission Log podcast started. It's been over three years. Can you believe that? Three years. Which is about how long it's been since we chatted, as I said. Now, 2016 is obviously a pretty big year for Trekkies, being the 50th anniversary since those famous words were first spoken on screen. What does the anniversary mean to you? Well, you know, I mean, my, my, my ability to fully grok the, the 50th anniversary is, is a little, is not, is not complete. I'm, I'm 42 years old, so I haven't been around for the full 50 years. However, having the last name that I have and, having, and, and being as, as uh, embedded in it as I've been, um, you know, I have tremendous pride for my family and my family name and my father. Um, you know, Star Trek, I'm preaching to the choir here, has is, is always been more than just entertainment. If it were just an entertainment show, I think I'd have pride and I, I'd, I'd give some acknowledgments, but I think I, I, it, I wouldn't be so, um, I guess, overcome uh, with, with the amazing fact that it's lasted this long. My, my real interest right now is what has changed in the last 50 years? What has changed and what has not changed? And what will change in the next 50 years? Um, what can we think of today? What social issues today uh, seem so absurd to us that in 50 years or maybe 10 years will be the complete norm? I love thinking about those things and I love exercising my brain and even my own um, ability to accept things. I consider myself very open-minded but you could throw th some things at me right now, I'm sure, that I would think are just inappropriate and wrong. And, and uh, you know, people 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, it's the norm. I, I love having that mental exercise. I think that's the biggest thing about Star Trek. E even those early episodes from the original series, you can still take meaning from those now. There's lessons still to be learned. Sadly, I, I think that's a bit of an indictment on the, on the human race. I was just going to say, sadly, is, is there's, there's a lot of things that I look at today and I go, God, we, didn't, we haven't solved that in 50 years, huh? That's a shame. That's a shame. We should be solving a lot of those issues instantaneously. Rod, sadly, some fans have taken uh, their love of the franchise too far and CBS and Paramount have had to respond. Can I ask you about the Axanar case? Uh, I mean, I, there's, there's 
you're not not allowed to, and there's nothing that I can't say about it. I'm just not going to talk about it. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm willing to say, and it's not about that case. It's, it's, um, it's, it's about the, the fan films in general. I myself am a huge supporter of the fan film companies that are willing to follow the rules and, and do it right. Um, CBS has been very gracious to, and I, I don't know this from speaking to any of them, but it would seem that they have allowed uh, certain fan groups to, to do these things as long as they do them correctly. Uh, and I don't know all the rules, but they, they have all been contacted and told, this is what you can't do. When someone steps outside those lines, there's going to be prices and penalties to pay. Um, ultimately, I'm a fan of the, the, the fans keeping Star Trek alive. Uh, the group that I, I'm really interested in right now is Star Trek Continues. Um, their writing, their costumes, their sets, their lighting, uh, everything is spectacular. Um, I, I'd say that a lot of those episodes are as good and in some cases better than some of the original episodes. I, I encourage everyone to check it out. Now, obviously, uh, neither of us are lawyers, and we're not trying to be. Uh, we're not fully informed, and we're not in the inner circle of CBS and Paramount. But the biggest reaction online has been from uh, what I'd like to call armchair lawyers and keyboard warriors. All right, let's move on. Now, I know you're not allowed to talk about it, but you are one of the new executive producers on Trek 6. Very briefly, are you excited with the direction that it's heading in? I know very little about the direction. Um, I've had two meetings with uh, Brian Fuller, and he, he is still um, developing the concept. And he's brought the writers together, and they're still developing the concept. What I'm excited about is the team that's been put together by CBS. They've brought, uh, of course, Alex Kurtzman, uh, Brian Fuller, and Heather Caden together. And I've had the opportunity to meet them. Um, Brian is, of course, a huge Star Trek fan. So right there alone, I have confidence that he will do it justice, um, you know, from, from that point of view. Uh, Alice Kurtzman has, has the history with the movies, and despite what anyone has to say, I thought the movies were, were incredibly well done and, and paid uh, a wonderful tribute to the whole Star Trek background. Um, Heather, I just met for the first time. She, I believe, uh, works with Alex. Um, and she's got a long list of credits, and so I, I believe I believe the entire team is incredibly capable. They understand the importance of Star Trek. You know, they they understand it's the 50th anniversary. They're not out to rewrite history. They're not out to change anything. Um, and they understand that they they need to to do their best to keep people happy, but also probably probably make it a little different. So that's really all I can say on this. Um, and, and the truth is, I don't know much more. I, I swear, I, I don't. Um, but uh, I, I have tremendous, tremendous hopes, and I, I'm really encouraged by the, the two meetings we've had. Well, it's premiering in January 2017. And no matter how we feel about the new movies, it is a new trek, and it's coming. I'm excited. On to another of your projects, Rod. Tell us about Roddenberry Adventures. Yeah, so, you know, the whole idea behind Roddenberry Adventures is to give people a unique perspective. You know, it's really based on the, the Idic philosophy in Star Trek. Um, you know, the Idic philosophy stands for infinite diversity and in, in infinite combinations. And it's basically the appreciation of all things that are different. And, you know, we do everything from the mundane walks in the park, and I hate to call them mundane, but compare that to a trip to Australia. Last year we went to Fiji. Um, but it's everything in between. And what we always try to do is we try to make sure that everyone has sort of a, a unique experience, something that they haven't had before. And we do that often by not just having the experience, but bringing along a, a specialist or a scientist or someone who can kind of expand on the experience itself. And so, you know, Australia is a place that I've been fortunate enough to go to before. I'm an avid scuba diver. So the first part of this trip, it's not only for divers, but the first part is... Uh, for divers. We are going out on the spirit of freedom. We're going on an 11 day cruise uh, way out to, of course, the Barrier Reef uh, and the Coral Sea. And, you know, uh, the diving I have done there, it, it, is, it is probably my favorite place in the world to dive simply because, again, the diversity of life there, the different kinds of things you can see and the different kinds of diving you can do. So I, I, I did that and I wanted to share it with uh, people here. 
Um, and then after that, we're going into the outback, and, and uh, we're going specifically, I forgot the name of the first place, we're also going to the rainforest, but we're going to go into the outback, we're going to go to the rainforest, and we're going to get a nice, you know, little taste of something that I think very few Americans have done before. I think it's two nights in Port Douglas and the beautiful Daintree Rainforest. A beautiful spot from what I'm told. Believe it or not, as an Aussie, I, I still haven't been up there. Well. Come join us. <laughs> I think I might just have to. Uh, looking at the itinerary, it looks absolutely awesome. As you said, heading out on the spirit of freedom and off to Port Douglas and Andara. Two nights in Sydney, then heading home back to the US. It sounds like an absolutely amazing adventure. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and as you were just, it looks like, uh, uh, kind of looking at the itinerary, there are multiple options. And I do want to, again, stress that it's not just for divers. There's, there's plenty to do for non-divers as well. Rod, thanks so much for your time. I look forward to seeing you in Australia. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Don't forget, you can get in touch with me on all of these social media channels, like, follow, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Let's have a chat about who you'd like to see me interview next. This is the Trek Zone Spotlight from Australia's first Star Trek fan site, treksone.org. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.